Hi everyone, welcome to Be Smart Together. This new how to series shows you how to excel, Power Query, M Code, and Power Pivot. Today, I will show you an Excel equivalent to cell reference in Power Query through M Code. The first one is how to reference to current Excel workbook. We have two identical data sets. The data on the left is constructed in a table format, whereas the right is defined as a range. When using the import from table or range function, the data source will be turned into a table if it is not a table or the name range was not defined. Now, check out the formula bar. The Excel.current workbook is the function generated in the background when we instructed Excel to import the table or range. The highlighted is the table name or defined name range. Let's change it to table. We have now pointed the data source from the range to the table. This function code is the key to getting sources or references from Excel. The next one is reference within a query. For time being, I have already imported a unit price and sales tables. Let's go to the sales query, then add an index column. Say you want to calculate the sales amount, in Power Query, you will create a custom column, select the quantity column, and multiply by the unit price column. In Excel, you can reference cell C4 and multiply by cell D4. To cell referencing in Power Query, you must specify the table name, followed by column name, and row number within curly brackets. Row number in Power Query starts from zero. The index column is the key to providing the row number. Add a custom column. In this case, the table name is also the step name, the column name is quantity, and the row number is available from the index column. Please remember the curly brackets. We are doing the same for unit price. You can replace the highlighted code, the index number for each row, with any row number. Say the first row, row number 0. The result is calculated based on row 0, and this is equivalent to the absolute cell reference in Excel. The next one is reference to another query. There is no difference in writing the M code to the previous example if you want to reference another query. You start with the table name, column name, and then row number. You will get the value from the specified cell. The next one is applying the reference as part of the function. Say you have an input table and want to use the value from the input column and row 0 in the function. Go to query 1. You want to apply the table.selectRows function to all the unit price greater than the input value. Highlighted is the reference code to the input table. The last one is reference a range. To get a range of text or value, you need to add the column name to the end of the code to specify which column you want. For example, if you need the first 10 rows, apply the list.first10 function and specify how many rows you want. If you need the last 10 rows, use the last 10 function. If you need 10 rows from row 5, use the list.range, specify the starting row, and how many rows. If you need the first 7 rows and the last 5 rows, all you need is to use the list.first end to get the first 7 rows, the list.last end to get the last 5 rows, and join them with an ampersand. Lastly, if you need multiple columns, you will need to use the table functions from the ribbons. Thank you for watching, and I hope you find this video helpful. Please don't forget to click like if you like the video.